et messieurs, bonjour à tous. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, welcome. I'm very happy to be with you today. My name is Hortense Asaga. I'm a journalist and I love cinema. And I'm very happy to welcome you here. And I will be fortunate enough to moderate this meeting devoted to cinema industry in Africa. I wish to thank the UNESCO for this nice initiative which showcases African cinema. And also, I wish to thank the Cannes Film Festival uh, for their 75th edition. I wish also to greet the uh, viewers that are connected online through the UNESCO social media. Simultaneous interpretation is available in English and French in the room, but also online. We are lucky enough to have distinguished guests here that are committed to uh, supporting African cinema, such as uh, filmmakers, directors, festival directors, people in charge of Nas National Center for Film. And I wish to give the floor to Mr. Pierre Lescure, the president of the Film Camps Festival, for a few words of welcome. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be very brief because I'm particularly interested, as you all are, in listening the reports that uh, will be uh, shown and uh, we will uh, be able to learn about the initiatives and institutions carried out and also the results that have been recorded in the development of cinema African cinemas and cinema in Africa. I wish to uh, welcome the general manager, Audrey Azoulay. UNESCO is deeply committed to all those initiatives. And it's wonderful because, uh, you know, I had a niece who told me a few uh, days ago, what is the UNESCO? And I said, well, the UNESCO is everywhere when there's a humanity and culture. And I had many examples to give her because you are everywhere. And cinema is an essential vector of creation and what it brings to humanity, to citizenship, and to uh, happiness uh, for men and women. Now, for the film market, it is essential. And Jérôme Payat, who, just as I do, uh, is about to retire. I think it's a very nice year, dear Jérôme, for the market to welcome this seminar in a place that are, you are practically unveiling because it opened last year, but is fully occupied in the market today. So you'll see uh, we're all gathered, but there's an opening, and it's easy for us to uh, welcome and go and see, have uh, different adventures. Thank you all. Thank you, Audrey. And uh, I'll be listening, yeah. and uh, you are uh, really fascinating because you represent the future of cinema and so of the Cannes Film Festival. Thank you, sir. Uh, you're, uh, of course, a lover of cinema. Now, I'm really happy to uh, welcome Mrs. Audrey Azolet, the general manager of the UNESCO, to open the conference. Uh, please come on up on stage. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. I'd like to thank the festival first, dear Pierre Lescure, and f uh, thank the uh, film market, dear Jérôme Payat, to uh, welcome us today, this morning, and to have always focused on uh, the voices of different worlds in uh, the Cannes Film Festival selection. And uh, there's some uh, brotherhood and value shared with the UNESCO because it is a place where all voices of the world can be heard. And if in uh, UNESCO we heard Amadou Mpateba and Joseph Cuzerbo, here we saw voices from all over the world, from cinema, from uh, 
South America and not only the dominant cinemas in terms of market. So it is very important for us to uh, present the work that has been done here at the Cannes Film Festival. And uh, I was very happy to see that uh, the festival opened with uh, this uh, honorary uh, Palme d'Or for Forrest Whitaker, who's really committed to the UNESCO and Africa. And he presented a movie, For the Sake of Peace, which is, uh, takes place in southern Sudan when uh, uh, it is about repairing torn up societies. And he does it on the ground and in partnership with UNESCO. So there are many elements explaining our, our presence here today. Now, the work that will be presented to you in a few minutes by Toussaint Tiendré Beogo, who's in charge of cultural diversity at UNESCO, is an important work and is part of the UNESCO role because we are the House of Cultural Diversity. And uh, we had this great convention of national diversity in 2005, uh, which showed that cinema is not a product and it's, it must be considered differently in commercial uh, negotiations. So this uh, specific characteristic had to be identified. And this cultural diversity is a basis for us to work and promote diversity. This is what we do by sharing knowledge, and this is the object of the report that will be presented to you. What is the state of strength on the African continent concerning cinema? And what we mean to say is that, of course, for cinema, we need talents, creativity, but not only. Cultural diversity is also the product of an ecosystem, a regulation, financing uh, systems, be they public or private, copyrights. So an all whole array of mechanism for cinema to bloom and for the voices of talent to echo and be amplified. And this is exactly where this report stands. UNESCO is also involved in uh, many other different things in terms of uh, cultural diversity and cinematographic diversity. <clears throat> so I'm going to give two examples. First, because I think that Naomi Kawase will uh, send a message in, uh, today because she's a goodwill ambassador at the UNESCO. And uh, in NARA, she welcomes residents, young uh, female uh, African movie directors, so as to support African voices. And the second example is the work we carried out with young talents, with a selection of uh, filmmakers, male or female, that will produce short movies for Netflix and revisit uh, African tales and created a lot of excitement on the continent and should be exported to other uh, countries and cinemas with other partners. So we are very happy to be here with you and this report is made for professional public powers, ministers, and we will also share it in September in Mexico uh, at Mondia Cult with a, a conference of uh, cultural ministers from all over the world, but it, it, it is also it was also made for professional. And I finally I wish to thank the panelists that will uh, take part in the discussion because this is a tool for you, so that voices can be heard. Thanks a lot, and have a very nice uh, session today. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Azoulay, uh, in fact, uh, you teased what's going to happen today, and uh, uh, Mr. Toussaint Tiendrebeogo is going to present the report for you. Thank you for welcoming him.
Your Excellency, Madam uh, uh, General Manager of U UNESCO, Mr. President of the Festival de Cannes, dear filmmakers and African partners, I'm very happy to show you an overview of the main conclusions of the UNESCO report of uh, African film industry. When we launched the initiative, our main mission was to map the audiovisual and cinema industries in uh, in 54 states in Africa, and it's a considerable challenge because no map of that scope had been established so far. The report is threefold. First, the analysis of Pan-African trends that shape the future of uh, African film industry. Second, a presentation of strategic development and growth models. And third, uh, the map of the uh, 54 states. Uh, the report allowed to generate or aggregate for the first time uh, global data for the continent. It shows, for example, that many aspects of the cinema remain informal because only 44% of countries have a film convention and 54% have a cinema policy. Now, the encouraging trend in the last decade is probably the slow yet consistent increase of production on the continent. However, the network of theaters in Africa is the least developed in the world, with a total of 1,653 screens. That means one screen for approximately 780,000 inhabitants. Our research also showed that 35.2% of the countries have public funding for uh, filmmakers. Two-thirds of the countries that participated in the consultation show estimate that at least 50% of the potential revenue of this industry has been lost because of the piracy. Overall, the uh, audiovisual and cinema African industry is uh, historically undervalued, uh, especially in terms of contribution to GDP. Current estimates are uh, approximately 5 billion uh, US dollars generated annually and 5 million jobs. The report also focused on uh, general regional dynamics. In terms of production, Western Africa is the first area of film production on the continent, with slightly more than 3,300 movies produced yearly. Those uh, regional dynamics are driven by a few countries only. For Western Africa, uh, it is Nigeria, then Ghana and Liberia. Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda and Ethiopia are the four driving forces for production in Eastern Africa. In Northern Africa, Tunisia and Egypt are leading production. And in Southern Africa, it is Zambia. In terms of cinema market, Eastern Africa is first with more than 800 screens, but uh, Southern Africa has more than 660 screens. Western Africa comes second with more than 290 screens, including more than 230 for Nigeria. In Northern Africa, more than half of the theaters are in Egypt and Morocco. In uh, Eastern Africa, it's Ethiopia that has the strongest market share. Now, TV and VOD has known the most intensive growth with the change in digital technology. Eastern Africa has the most uh, important number of private TVs on the continent with more than 370 channels. There are three main operators for pay TV market, and it is divided between multi-choice, Star Times, and Canal Plus Africa. 
Netflix is the main driving force of VOD market, followed by Showmax and Iroko TV. Amazon and Disney are slowly entering the African market. Let's now have a look at the main opportunities before tackling challenges. The report shows that the economic potential of film industry has remained widely untapped on the whole continent practically, with suitable uh, public policies and necessary investment we estimate that the industry's potential could create 20 million jobs and generate 20 billion US dollars a year. And several levers and assets have been identified in the report. First, a new generation of uh, competent, gifted and daring filmmakers have been noticed locally and internationally. Second, the craze of African populations for African content is evidenced daily. Third, the ongoing digital revolution that has accelerated with COVID-19 is a game changer for uh, African film industry. Thanks to development of digital platforms, uh, African films and TV series and uh, viewed all over the world and those dynamics coincide with a global movement that tends to recognize and uh, uh, increase diversity on screens, which opens new uh, local and foreign markets for uh, African filmmakers and producers. Now concerning challenges, the report highlights several ones. First, the poorness, if not the absence, of relevant policies is one of the main obstacles to growth on the continent. Enlightened public policies are all the more necessary as dynamism and potential of the sector have aroused the interest of many multinationals that might eventually have predominance on some markets if there is no adapted regulation. Second. A main obstacle to the growth uh, of our sector comes from the fact that revenues are lost because of piracy and we might act uh, to prevent this. Third, gender inequality persists in uh, the audiovisual and cinema industry all over the continent. It, maybe if there are a few exceptions. Fourth, the training uh, possibilities are lacking to support the full potential of cinema on the continent. Fifth, the safeguard and valorization of uh, audiovisual and cinema archives is a considerable challenge because there is no legal system of deposit on the continent. The first people to act in favor of conservation are the national archives but only eight African countries have such structures and institutions. To fully profit from uh, uh, African film industry, there are main, uh, strategy, four main strategic models for development of growth. The Hollywood model is characterized by a fast and low-cost production. It is based upon an unabashed commercial approach with which is pragmatic uh, market-based, so that the removal of administrative and financial obstacles to give free reign to private initiative would be very important in the public policy. The author model is driven by uh, a vision thinking that uh, art should not be submitted to the market risks. And the model is to support creators and the weakest link in the value chain. So education, training, and talent development would be key elements for public policy. The service model has been designed to supply production and post-production services so that uh, uh, consistent transport and cinematographic uh, infrastructures Co-production treaties, uh, uh, tax abatements, 
uh, would be uh, key elements for the uh, public policy. And then the festival model fo focuses on the promotion aspect. It allows to have a regular event organized yearly uh, on the continent. Whatever the strategic model chosen, the recommendation of the report showed that it would be beneficial for all the countries to implement basic measures. For example, an institutional and regulatory framework with uh, thanks to a policy or a strategic document that would take into account distribution in a digital environment. Also, uh, financing mechanism such as incentives uh, uh, concerning taxes uh, uh, and uh, um, broadcasting quotas. Finally, a main stake is training with at least a program of professional training or an easy access to uh, training online. Finally, let me underline what seems to be to me one of the key messages of the report. Uh, because we are undergoing deep mutations, it is very important for the states to establish regional and continental strategies so as to take control of their growing creative sectors. The uh, challenges and trends of the African film industry should be addressed in a collective and enlightened way. And this is how states might guarantee that their creative products in the past, the present and the future be protected, preserved, developed, and that their cultural value, but also their commercial value remains on the continent, benefits to Africa and contributes to its importance on, on the world. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Mr. Tiendre Beogo, for the synthesis and uh, the report is available if you wish to take it uh, as you walk away. Now, the conclusions of this report will uh, help uh, our debate. So I would like to invite on stage our panelists, Mr. Alex Moussa Savodogo, General Delegate of FESPACO, Mrs. Cecilia Ciancarelli from the Film Foundation, Mr. Khaled Azek, General Secretary of the National Center of Cinema and Image of Tunisia, and Mr. Leza, uh, Film Director and Producer in Madagascar. So please take your seats. Naomi Kawase, who's the Goodwill Ambassador from the UNESCO, could not be with us, unfortunately, but she sent a message and uh, I, uh, we will see it right now. え、ちょうど今飛行機でそちらに向かっているところです。え、私にとってカンヌ映画祭、え、これはですね、映画産業の多様性の、ま、重要性を強調するための場所。そして若い才能が発見されですね、評価され、そして認知される。そういう重要の
この新年から私はアフリカの若手女性映像作家のためのレジデンシーを構想しました来週からスタートするこのレジデンシーグランドボヤージュと名付けました5月31日から私の故郷である奈良で開催されますこのレジデンシーのアイデアは2019年8月に日本で開催された第7回ティカットで行われたユネスコの会議国境を越えたアフリカ映画にパネリストとして私が参加したことがきっかけです私はアフリカの若い才能にもっと自由に移動できる機会が必要であることを強く訴えましたこのため日本政府からの資金援助とユネスコの協力のおかげでアフリカの女性映画監督を2週間奈良に迎え映画制作をできることを今誇りに思っていますコロナの流行により当初2020年3月に予定されていたレジデンシーですけれども2年の延期を経てやっと待った甲斐があり、えー、皆さんと実際に会って、えー、レジデンシーを開催することができます実際の出会いに勝るものはないですよね私にとって映画とは環境や出会いに奮い起こされ物語を語ることなのです映画制作を可能にする環境を作ることはだからとても大事,大事です、えー、そのためにアフリカの若い女性監督たちに提供したいのは創創造造性と想像力ののための空間ですそういった意味で奈良は彼女たちが自分たちの物語を作るために自分たちだけの声を見つけるための刺激そんな場になると信じています奈良の美しい街を自由に歩き多くの人に話しかけ質問をし答えてもらうそのような偶然の出会いから物語を作るようにお願いしようと思っています言葉の壁や文化の違いを超えてきっと共通点や普遍的な人間性を見出すことができるはずですそしてその出会いや思い出を記録し映像として紡ぎ出してほしいと思っています2週間の滞在が終わる頃にはそれぞれが10分程度のショートフィルムを完成させているはずですこれらの作品を2022年9月に開催される奈良国際映画祭で上映しこれらの作品の認知や露出を高めようと考えていますまたレジデンシーの参加者を日本に招きレッドカーペットの上を歩いたり観客と作品について話し合ったりする経験をしてもらいたいとも願っていますなぜならアーティストが自由に移動できることそれからこういった場に出てくることそれは本当に密接に関係しているからです私は過去のユネスコの活動への貢献が認められ2021年11月に文化・クリエイティブ産業のユネスコ親善大使に任命されましたアーティストが自由に移動できること文化協力そしてこういった市場へのアクセスの重要性を私の声で訴えていく所存ですユネスコと日本政府によるグランドボヤージュレジデンシープログラムへの支援に感謝し実りある議論になることを記念しますアフリカの映画監督のためのレジデンシーの機会がもっともっと増えることを願って読みませんまた皆さんと世界のどこかでお会いできるよう楽しみにしています川瀬直美でした Thank you Merci beaucoup Thank you, dear Naomi Kawase, and we are happy to see that the UNESCO NARA residency program is ongoing and、uh, will be benefiting to the next generation to, of talent. I'd like、uh, to turn to you, Mr. Alex Musa Sawadaga. You are the delegate, general delegate of FESPACO, that is the Pan African Festival of Cinema and Television in Uganda. It、uh, celebrated its 50 years、uh, of existence in 2021 and is one of the most important festivals in African cinema, just、uh, like Carthage. What could you tell us about the importance of festival in the structuration of film industry? Thank you, Hortense. So,、uh, yes, we've aged on the continent, but we age nicely, right? So, FESPACO, I don't, do not wish to go over the history, but if you like、uh, African or world cinema, you know that this is a very important festival uh, uh, led by uh, people that I would call、uh, our fathers or big brothers. That managed to have such an event organized. And、uh, 
which is really an event for uh, all uh, cinema lovers. It was created in 1969. And uh, uh, the market film was set up 10 years later. And then in uh, those founders of the FESPACO were very uh, uh, aware of the importance of the industry on the continent. The idea was not simply to have screenings, but to think about the future of African cinema and to structure the uh, African uh, ecosystem for cinema and uh, it was led by uh, cinema uh, filmmakers such as Arun Sisako, uh, because those were the next generation of new filmmakers. So there was a uh, the international market cinema, and it is really an economic uh, uh, force for the FESPACO. Uh, I came here in 2020, and it was important for our generation to be um, uh, in accordance with the creators of the cinema, but it was also important for us to, to create tools to uh, reinforce the economic market of the FESPACO, and we created what is called FESCAPO, FESPACO Pro, that is for production and post-production so that we might allow the filmmakers or directors uh, to have resources, to have competitive movies. And also we try to see how today the young people on the continents that uh, wanted to uh, uh, work in cinema could have the possibilities to come to festivals such as Cannes, Berlin, or Toronto. And we created a tool to give them the opportunity to say that they work uh, in cinema on the continent. And if we want to reinforce the industry, all the value chains must be developed. So Yenega Academy uh, is to have uh, 20 some people come from the continent and they are in Ouagadougou from, during the festival and they can meet with filmmakers, producers and everything which uh, concerns cinema marketing or post-production because it was a moment of cinema history and we focused on training filmmakers but we forgot about all the the trade surroundings filmmaking. So it's a platform which uh, allows to think about the other trades. And what about uh, the initiative to promote gender equality? Yes, uh, in, in fact, in FESPACO, we are aware of the situation. And in uh, 2019, there was uh, some sort of an uprise and as uh, a responsible of these uh, festival, and as soon as I uh, uh, was part of this festival, uh, I wanted to have 50% of women and 50% men. I succeeded in in, f in having 40, 60, and I hope women will for, uh, forgive me, but uh, next year I hope to reach 50% men and women. We also wish to have women uh, in uh, 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 different professions and try and see how we can have women committing much more in terms of uh, discussions, master classes, because it is our interest on the continent, because we are all aware of what's of what's going on in the continent. It's a transition era, and there's a new dynamic of uh, creators. And even though there are men on the forefront, we know that they are also have women back scenes. And uh, it's not only a question of gender, but also a question of quality. Yes. 
I also always leave the possibility of uh, juries to choose, but last year it, we had a project and it is developing in uh, laboratories in residents on the continent. For example, in Tunisia, Bushishad uh, focuses also on questions of parity. And at the FESPACO, we're, we're coming close. Okay, up to you, ladies. Uh, Mr. Khaled Azek, you will tell us about the CENTU program, which the result of a South House cooperation. Why is it such an important uh, um, approach? And you are the General Secretary of the National Center of Cinema and Image in Tunisia. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. I thank the UNESCO for organizing the event. Well, General Secretary, but also in charge of management, in fact. So I uh, headed uh, this National Center for Cinema and Image uh, two weeks ago. So yes, it's uh, it's I just started, and that's why I'm where uh, I'm I'm uh, having papers in my hand so as to communicate the information uh, relevantly. Welcome. So we'll talk about CENTU. What about this program of South, uh, South House Cooperation? Why, is, why does it matter? Well, CENTU is a support program to uh, develop uh, a long feature film. It's a Tunisian initiative which was launched in 2019. Uh, and it's a cooperation between a public structure, that is Tunisia, Morocco, uh, Burkina Faso, Niger, Ni Tunisia. And uh, it is characterized by a platform to accompany <coughs> African uh, filmmakers. And it is a South House cooperation supported mainly by uh, um, national centers for cinema or national directions for cinema. And the goal uh, is for those public structure to uh, put their means and, and uh, uh, initiatives together so as to support African filmmakers developing their movies. So on the continent, as a public structure, It's okay. So on the continent, it is very important or indispensable to have young talents being supported by states. And the South, South cooperation is to have people from different structures so as to think together about what we can do for African cinema. African cinema is also nicely exported and it has been more and more exported in the last years. So we are thinking about its future and its possibility for broadcasting. But we wish to keep our African identity and that's probably one of the main challenges of the programs. But we want our movies to represent our daily lives. It is also important to highlight some flaws, such as how to uh, avoid uh, uh, administrative difficulties or obstacles. Uh, we also give uh, scholarships uh, of uh, 5,000 euros to the project owner from African countries and to help him uh, traveling around so that he can or she can uh, be in residencies. It is a very important approach because the developing phases is quite complex and difficult to finance. And they are only seldom financing supports. 
Now, what is the added value? Uh, what is the impact on professionalization or uh, the industry? Well, uh, four points concerning uh, sh uh, added value. First, a mutualization of resources from African cinema because we can accompany authors, writers, and to preserve their African identity, their copyrights, and we have residencies uh, where we have consultants and African professionals. So Sentu relies upon African skills and competences. Our goal is to shape a professional culture that would be common to African filmmakers between the main stakeholders, such as writers, film directors, and producers. And this would create a circulation of creativity between those stakeholders. We also aim at creating uh, uh, training structures so as to reinforce African skills and uh, professionalization on the continent so that Centu might become a label. Second, the development of African industry between uh, actors, producers, and co-producers. That's one of uh, our key points of the South-South Cooperation Program. And the third residence we have is a production and co-production work workshop uh, designed to uh, put in contact project owners that were selected with other African producers to give also them also the necessary tools to produce the project they wish to support. And we wish to uh, have a networking between writers, producers, delegate producers uh, within the different uh, uh, cinema events over the continent. Three, continuity with platforms. That is uh, both continuity and complementarity. Sentu is not the only platform in Africa, but they hope to be complementary with all the national uh, uh, initiatives that already exist at a regional or continental or national scales. Uh, dogs, bugs, feed their dogs, and so so forth. So Sentu aims at reinforcing all those mechanisms, devices, and platforms, and to accompany all those developments, which would benefit the uh, writers, filmmakers, and producers in Africa. And then fourth, to unite. Uh, national African partners so as to create a African nationality in terms of content and shape because we are mainly financed by continental partners, uh, mainly the um, National Center for Cinema or National Direction for Cinema but also UNESCO, OIF, OFT. So this collaboration would work in favor of this strategic development, but also professional filmmakers in Africa. Thank you, Mr. Khaled we, uh, uh, re we have in mind the 5,000 euros, huh, right? And we know that money is uh, crucial here. Now, let's switch to another important subject in terms of film industry, and this is the um, safeguarding. So I turn to, to you, Cecilia Sincerely. 
you um, represent the African Film Heritage Pro Project, which was initiated by uh, Martin Scusisi, but all uh, uh, Film Foundation, the Pan African Federation of S Filmmakers, and the uh, UNESCO. So you came with a documentary, and the images are wonderful. So let's have a look at that. Ça s'applaudit, hein, vraiment. Yeah, that was really nice. So, Cecilia, there are difficult uh, trades, more difficult trades than to work on such uh, movies, right? How do you select them? Is it okay if I speak uh, English? Because it's easier for me. Quite happy to be here. As, as it was said, I'm, I actually represent a variety of entities uh, that are behind this project. I'm, uh, I'm Italian. I work in, uh, in a film archive in Bologna. So this is really, like all Mission Impossibles, it can be done alone. It needs, um, it needs uh, partners that really care and are passionate about doing this kind of job, but for, for, um, for the film foundation, as you all know about the film foundation, so I won't, you know, be on that too long, but, um, working at a project like this was more like, um, trying to be instrumental to the work as opposed to trying to be leaders of the work. For us, it was really important to have Fupasi as the main partner and initiator. So it's, uh, we are there to uh, facilitate the work that FAPASI uh, tells us to do, basically, to, uh, to let us know what the films are in danger, what the countries, what the filmmakers that we don't know. We are very ignorant of a continent that's three times the US and with a, more than a thousand languages, with more than 50 countries, we are very ignorant. So we need the lead of those who know of the network of scholars, of archivists, of filmmakers, documentary to lead the way. So we wanted to start with films because sometimes in this kind of meetings, we talk about cinema and after a little bit, we forget about what we're talking about. Uh, nobody would ever ask, why is it important to preserve the Sistine Chapel, would it? Would we let the colors of the F Sistine Chapel fade or the plaster fall or the pyramids of Giza? We would let this heritage just go loose. And cinema is the most vital art form that there is today to communicate across 
cultures, geographies. And it, it is our duty. When I listened with a lot of um, interest to everything that was said, I think the extra step will be to really find a connection between mapping what's happening in, in all the uh, countries and the cinemas and, the, and trying to initiate new projects for current filmmakers. But I think the missing link is we need to make sure that us in the West, when we talk about cinema, we talk about taxi driver, but we talk about Sedo, we talk about Pierrot Le Fou, and we talk about uh, Mambeti in the same way. Uh, and we talk about Lacta Ramina, and we talk about Fellini in the same way. We still don't do that because we don't, we don't get to see those images. We don't get to see those films. And I think that all filmmakers, regardless of their cultural identity, need to tap into their history, into their images, into their art, to produce more art, to produce more vision. And if you think that in the history of cinema, cinema was not given in the African continent, it was taken. It was taken roughly 60 years after everybody else. And reappropriating the image, reappropriating cinema and the image and identity through cinema is so key that I think nowadays we need to look back to those pioneers, to those mentors whose films are as modern as anything we see. They are as breathtaking as anything we see. So I think that if, if, if UNESCO could support, because UNESCO really is on top of everything, uh, of, of this whole structure, if UNESCO really could help make, uh, um, sort of strengthen the dialogue between all these incredible projects about current filmmaking and how to uh, bring those cinemas of the pioneers, what we call the classics, but it's cinema is cinemas. There's no black and white and color. There's no silent and sound. Cinema is cinema. So we need to bring cinema from the past back into the, uh, into the life of current cinema. And this is what we do. Uh, I didn't really answer your question as we go through the process. It's an extremely complicated process. And there's also a real misunderstanding about the words we use. When we talk about restoring, we really talk about a tradition that really draws from the history of, of the arts, of the re re history of restoring the arts. So the ethics and the practices of film restoration are closer to um, the ethics and practices of painting restoration that shaped, you know, around the mid of the 20th century. So restoring means creating new elements that would ensure that the life of these films can be preserved for another hundred years. We're not going to go into the digital versus, uh, you know, film stock. Otherwise, we do a conference just on that. But there is the problem of the digital natives in terms of preservation, which again is a whole different things. Um, You've seen, do I have other 30 seconds? Yes. Yes. Uh, you've seen on the screen an array of some of the films that we restored with this project in the last few years. It's a very long and painstaking process because it has to do with uh, obviously reaching out and having the full agreement of the rights holders, the filmmakers. Uh, it means locating the best surviving elements, which in some uh, instances is really hard. Um, it has to do with uh, making sure that the aesthetic of the film is also preserved. You, you, we don't restore living the digital tool, tools to the maximum of what they could do. Otherwise, we would have a film that looks like a film that's shot today. The digital technology today is too powerful. We need to control the digital technology with a photochemical mind, with, a, with, a, with, a, with the mind of a historian, with the mind of somebody who knows cinema, what cinema looks, what the grain looks in the 70s, what the black and white of the Nouvelle Vague, how is that different from Italian neorealism? How is that different to St. Ben's black and white? So there's a whole, there's a whole um, experience and knowledge and research that goes behind the actual act of restoration. And then 
without the network of those who are in Africa, who knows the cinema, who knows the filmmakers, you know. I'm here today, but Abu Bakar Sanogo, who's the representative for, for um, uh, Fepachi for this project, should really, should really have been uh, here instead of me. But it, it is thanks to this network that we are able to restore. We've restored more or less 15 films so far since uh, 2016, which doesn't seem a lot, but I can assure you it's a lot. Um, uh, we've restored Chronique des années de Bresse, uh, Balakta Hamina, we've restored Sambin Zanga by Sarah Moldor, it took us three years to do that. Uh, we restored Munamoto and La Femme Couteau, two films that were really considered quite unknown uh, in the circle of even cinephiles that I know and that uh, now travel for over 40 different festivals around the world. We need to bring those films back in a cinema because the collective experience of cinema is what made us fall in love with cinema, and I think it's what can still inspire. And, um, and yes, I can go on and on, so just stop me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Cecilia. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Alors. Thanks, Cecilia. Thanks a lot. Now we'll uh, have a look at a cinema example with you, dear Laz. You're a film director, uh, um, producer, and you initiated uh, meetings of uh, the short movie. Madagascar is uh, rebuilding his cinema history. You have reopened uh, theaters and festivals. How can you tell us about what uh, is happening in Madagascar? And how can this be duplicated on the African continent? Thank you, Hortense. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to uh, tell you about two things today, and that's a transition with Cecilia. I wish to uh, greet members of the FEPASI that are in the room. Uh, and I wish to say that in the 50 movies that the foundation will be restoring, that is the first Malagasy movie dating back from 1937. And our idea is to uh, show it uh, in the next edition of Fest Paco because we found this movie and that's great news. In uh, Maybe also in Carthage at the GCC, yes. So 17 years ago, I initiated the uh, Madagascar uh, meetings of the short movie, Rencontre du film court. And at the time, there, was, there were no many things going on with cinema because we had great Malagasy uh, uh, directors, such as Raymond Malagasy, who uh, won a prize in the 80s. But the idea of the festival was to uh, see how cinema was going in Madagascar, but also in Africa. And we had first only Malagasy movies, but we saw that there was potential for animation movies. And we stressed that. We set up workshops to boost animation cinema because uh, we downloaded tutorials, cracked the softwares, and this is how we uh, produce movies. And then the movies could um, go out of Madagascar. And now we have many animation projects, a series and also a long feature on uh, rallies. Now for short movies, we also created a support fund which produces two or three short movies a year. We have approximately 10,000 euros a year to uh, make movies. And it's only s local sponsoring to finance the movies. And we have a distribution contracts with the creators so that if the film is slightly profitable, we will take 30 to 40 percent of the movie generate uh, of the uh, money generated by the movie so that uh, 
the fund could be um, could survive with such a system. Now, this is the uh, oldest festival for short movies on the continent, and it uh, specialized on short movies after after the seventh or eighth edition and we'll open competition to all African movies, which created a boom on the continent because we invite uh, filmmakers and we pay for uh, broadcasting rights of the movies that we present. So even if that's done for short movies, the idea is to set an example because when you think about uh, short movies, well, in fact, it means you're investing in the new generations because uh, in other countries, uh, there are many uh, support for the younger generation. And this is what we're trying to do with the short movies. Uh, the UNESCO finances short uh, uh, movies that will be broadcast on Netflix is a great example and we should encourage it. Maybe we could do it in Madagascar also with our meetings of the short movies because this is something we work upon uh, on a daily basis. So this is what I could tell you all in all. The next edition will be held from uh, November 25th to December 4th and it will be the 17th edition. So uh, will there be a new hub uh, for this uh, cinema in Africa? Yes. Uh, I also wish to tell you about, because uh, I'm the president of APACER, that is a, a, an African alliance to defend copyrights, and we'll have a panel at uh, 2 p.m. So uh, there's also ASISA, writers and directors worldwide, and in terms of, yeah, uh, with this report of the UNESCO, we saw that copyrights are uh, something to be worked upon. And uh, we managed to have an analysis of this in the last five years. Uh, and we published an overview of copyrights in Africa. And we tried to update this. So five years later, we will be able uh, to launch because APACER is will become a company to manage uh, copyrights in Africa. And it's a very good news that we'll uh, talk about uh, at 2 p.m. So maybe you can come and see us because now we have a tool to defend those copyrights. So this is really important. And this is something we wish to underline here today. So please come on the African Pavilion at 2 p.m. Thank you, Laz. And because you have the floor, well, we'll have to wrap up because in a few minutes time, you'll be invited to a cocktail. So we talked about figures. We talked about industry. We saw very nice images. There are many positive uh, uh, events. So maybe you in one minute, can you tell us what uh, makes you optimistic concerning uh, the uh, African film industry? Uh, there's cause for uh, uh, being optimistic, right? Yes, I am optimistic uh, when I see what's going on on the continent. Uh, there are many new creations. We also understand that many countries are taking responsibilities to create national support, which did not exist in the past. There are also new generations that won't wait for uh, financing, uh, and they manage to be very creative uh, with uh, very limited finance. And there's also a co-production on the continent, which did not exist in the part. For example, between Burkina Faso and Senegal, Ivory Coast on Senegal. And we have many young people that work as collectives. Otherwise, it would be impossible to work 
So we have uh, collective experiences, and this is the case in Madagascar, uh, but also in Burkina Faso and Senegal. And finally, we were fortunate enough to see that on the continent, there are people who love cinema and can create res residencies or laboratories that did not exist 10 years ago on the continent because all of them were in France, Germany or Switzerland. So we have many possibilities. Now, uh, maybe what we lack is a will, a collective will uh, from our uh, um, policy makers or governments to support those initiatives. Cecilia, well, I'm very happy to see that there was um, a desire to talk about archives in such a context and that it would help young filmmakers. And I wish to underline that heritage and archives is not distinguished from um, creation. And it also has economic value because if you look at uh, France, well, classic movies are being released in theaters. And in 2019 at the FESPACO, we uh, unveiled a FESPACO classics and we wish to keep on working and have premiere openings of those classic movies because I think that archives, I hope that in the future, you will have a chapter concerning African film archives so that the past of African cinema is integrated into this mapping of the history of cinema because it is about our memory and it is a universal memory. Yes, if you know where you come from, you know where you're headed. Yes. Uh, I agree uh, with what Alex said. I think it's very important to federate people around the African cinema to gather the means to multiply the tools, but also to defend the identity or maybe the context of uh, the uh, cinema industries in terms of shapes and contents to rely on its potential and uh, to make sure that it is a promising future. Laz, I wish to thank the organizers of those meetings and tell you that I feel that the new generation, uh, because now we are playing an active role, and that's what I say when I meet people who are 24 like myself, who are uh, active, playing an active role in African cinema, I tell them this is our turn. Maybe uh, our elders made mistakes, but I know that this new generation, uh, uh, having many tools at uh, their disposals, we are probably more flexible and we wish to work together. And this is what I wish to say uh, to conclude my speech. Working together, if we work together, we'll be quicker. And we don't have to wait because I'm fed up to rely on governments. Let's go on. It's a fact. They are not supportive enough. Let's integrate this and move forward. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Are there uh, politicians in the room? Thanks, Lias. Well, it was a pleasure. This is the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank all the viewers that followed us online. Uh, thank the UNE thank the UNESCO and Viva Le Cinema. Now, if you walk down Ali E and uh, go to the Lerins room, you'll have a cocktail where we'll be waiting for you and might keep on talking. And please do not forget to take the report on African cinema. Okay. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen.